All right. When it comes to uh, levels, what we want to do is we set both of our tracks to the same level using our meter. Uh, in the olden days, they'd use uh, a VU meter, which is like um, it's got like an arm on it, like a like your speedometer has in your car, and that points to the uh, the level. Nowadays, they use uh, LEDs, and we, we want to set it to the ideally 0 dB. Some people like to do it a little bit higher, some people a little bit lower than 0 dB. Should really be keeping it at 0 dB. The reason for that is because everything else is measured in increments on the, the, the rotaries um, in dBs, minus 26 dBs, plus 6, plus 8 dB, plus 12. So you know that if your tracks are set to 0 dB, if you take minus 7 dB, if you put on plus 6 dB, it's going to be from that 0%, from that 0 dB, you're going to be adding on plus 6 or taking away minus 7, etc. And that is where that comes from, from, from the 0 dB. Also, distortion is something we want to um, keep away from. Uh, when you see something clipping going into the red or the uh, the orange or the yellow LED on some uh, mixers today um, to give you a warning that you're, you're near clipping uh, you usually tend to get a distortion on your recordings as well as through your speakers and um, obviously it sounds pretty terrible so you want to get the best sound quality that you want ideally you want to set your master level to 0 dB as well and I'll, I'll go over the importance actually of the master level um, a bit later on and something that you'll probably not be aware if you've been in a, in a club and gone past a booth and you've seen a, a DJ's uh, levels are all in the red they're all up all over the place then the guy probably doesn't know what he's doing and that comes down to uh, the fact that the term professional is somebody a pro, always a pro, he knows where he's really good, he's really good at this or that or is it just his profession and it's his day job in that case it's probably that it's just he's, he's getting away with it as his day job but he doesn't really know what he's doing um, usually see an engineer in a decent club um, going mad at the DJs that don't know what they're doing with the levels all in the red um, they do have a, a limiter set up so it doesn't damage their uh, expensive equipment however that won't affect the fact that the levels on both tracks are well the levels on both tracks might not be anywhere near the same because you don't know how many LEDs further up um, in the red one is from the other so that the levels might be completely different um, I'll go over the importance of actually having our levels the same on each track that's because we don't want to go from a really loud track down into mixing to one that's really quiet and we don't want to go from a, a, the opposite which is a really quiet track and then overload it with one that's really loud we also don't want to when we mix the two tracks together we don't want to get into a position where Two, two tracks coming together, um, say so about 50% of the mix, it peaks in volume, it goes up in the middle and then comes back down again, um, because that doesn't sound right either, there's a lot of DJs that do that, they don't really know they're doing that. Um, so we've got both our tracks that we're going to mix together set at 0dB at the same level, it's usually best I find to take it to the next LED up till that lights and then bring it back down again till it till that doubt doubts out then you know that it's both of it do that on both tracks then you know that they're both as matched um, as much as you can get them obviously there can be slight differences uh, certain tracks can be louder in certain parts of the track and quieter in others um, sometimes that's a problem when you've got a track that's loud um, through the majority of the track or later on but the intro is very quiet and it, that can be difficult to mix with 
you're caught in two minds whether do I do I boost the gain or the trim on the um, incoming track um, and then t try and turn it back down again or do I br do I bring it in knowing that it's quieter and, and have to put up with that then those tracks can be um, when you come across those kind of tracks they can be a bit of a problem um, but what what we what we do to make sure that we don't have that dip in the middle of the the mix, uh, fifty percent in the mix, is we take a, a good look at our master level out, and we make sure as we are mixing that we keep the level to the naught dB or as close as we can we can to the naught dB by monitoring the master output as we're mixing. Of course, we're doing everything in time. Um, doing everything musically, counting everything musically in our head, doing everything time as well in rhythm uh, and in doing it correctly but we're also looking at the master level to make sure that when we bring in the input track in uh, if it starts to the next if the next LED starts to just just wink uh, above the naught dB then we can then we can take out more of the outgoing track to compensate before putting more in and we keep an eye on that meter as we're mixing to keep that mix uniform all the way through the mix so the one track we're playing is not at 0 db the track that we're going to bring in is at 0 db and the 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 fifty percent of the mix that kind of range there we want that to be no higher anyway than 50, uh, than 0 dB by looking at the master um, output that we've already set to 0, 0 dB, we want to set to 0 dB so we can keep an eye on that, that way then we know that the the mix, our mixes haven't gone set level, peak in the middle and back down again and it sounds, it sounds weird but there are a lot of DJs that do that uh, another thing while we come to that um, crossfaders, uh, if you're mixing using a crossfader um, ideally they're in theory a good thing because you've got a hand free if you're a novice and you're not sure that you've got your tracks perfectly in sync you can still make adjustments um, with the free hand or you can use them to grab at the effects uh, and the rotaries and, and do various other things um, instead with the, with, the, with the free hand that you've got because you're using the crossfader However, you are stuck to a set curve. Um, my mixer and a lot of others do have a curve adjust for the crossfader, but even then, when you've set the the curve adjust, you're still stuck to that set curve that you've set. Whereas when you're using the the two volume faders or the up faders to mix with, you have a more free range. You can bring you can vary the rates of a fade um, mix to mix. Um, and there and then on the spare of the moment. Um, however, if you do use the crossfader to mix with, there's something you you'll uh, you don't want to well you don't want to neglect is the fact that mixers these days mainly um, come with or are built around a, a dip what they call a dipless crossfader. And what that means is there's no dip in the middle at the 50% travel mark of the crossfader when it comes into the middle point of its travel. Um, what that's for was in the older mixers and probably still some that are around today that are that that, that do still have the dip there at the crossfader at the fifty percent point, they would compensate for that peak in level, what I, what I was just talking about before, at the fifty percent stage so it doesn't go up higher and then come back down. It automatically compensated by putting a dip on the volume in that point so you'd go from A to B on the crossfader and the, the dip would already be compensated for in the middle but if you're using one of the modern today's modern mixers or mixer with a dipless crossfader then you will have to compensate for that dip. No, there being no dip in the dipless crossfader by putting the dip in yourself by setting bringing the up faders down to the sweet spot um, and you need to do that by obviously setting your crossfader dead dead center and setting two tracks to the same level 
um, mixing them um, down and then keeping an eye on the master level like I just everything I just explained before and moving the crossfader across from point A to the middle to point B and it should be uniform um, zero dBs on each spot and of course if you bring both tracks if you bring the crossfade into the middle so both tracks are playing but if, obviously if you, you beat match them first it'll, it'll obviously sound nicer and you can bring the the two levels at the same rate down till you look at the master level till it registers so it's not 0 dB there as well as the, either side then you know it's going to be uniform the mix will be uniform as you move across and you put that dip in some mixers do on the upfaders markings do put um, a subtle marker level there sometimes it's usually around halfway uh, around the number five sometimes it's a, it's, it's a three quarter because of the slope on the uh, the upfaders themselves sometimes it's at the three quarter level mark there's a, there'll be a, a, a red marker or a white marker or similar um, on the um, increments and it, it's not always guaranteed to be bang on that marker but, but because it, that's just printed on um, a, a face plate but it's it's going to be there or there about around, around there usually if that's the case and that marker is there um, but yeah, that you want to make, make uh, a point of that if if you do use the crossfader for mixing. Obviously, uh, I'd just like to point out that you do use the the gain knobs or sometimes um, labelled trim knobs to set the individual channel level uh, of individual track on each channel. Um, in the olden days, you just used to use the up fader and then up to use you had no real choice but to use. Um, the crossfader to to mix with, but obviously every every mixer these days has um, gain or trim um, on there for you to make the adjustments with.